Okay, guys, so our bioinformatic team just, just feed back to me. We found a lot of variation in the genome of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which potentially can be a new variant. So we're going to have to do the variant validation process quite quick. Lucius, if you can get that samples, and then we're going to start the process, OK? You, Sasha, how long is it going to take you to do the extraction? Two hours max. We'll even prepare the reagents while Lucius goes to fetch the samples. OK. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to do the whole process in 36 hours. So if we manage to still load uh, today in the end of the day, tomorrow we can do the analysis. For pandemics, speed is essential. We need to get SARS-CoV-2 samples from 100 different clinical locations, hundreds of kilometers far apart. The results that we identify can be translated into actions that save lives. Hello. Hello. I'm a community health worker. Come okay. inside, What's up? Speak. You've heard about the outbreak that's happened in the community, the disease of COVID. We're hoping to find the rate where we can curb it. Would you be okay if we did a test on you? Mm. You mustn't be afraid. Test is simple, you know. Simple, easy no... test. It's, it's not painful. Can can I go in? Yes, please. I'm yeah. very happy to hear that. Viruses are constantly changing. They're always evolving. And we have to be actively involved in understanding how they're changing, what's driving it, and what's the consequence of that. Are they more transmissible? Do they make people sicker? Do the diagnostic tests to identify them still work? Just five swaps in one nose, part in the other, and then it's all done. We need to keep monitoring new viral variants as they emerge, because that virus could be all around the world, a matter of days for sure. If you are negative, you are good to go. Nice, thanks. Everyone in the world has seen the speed of this pandemic. How you can go from very little infections to a high number of infections until hospitals can get overwhelmed very quick. You see what's happening is this, an outbreak in the community. If you can prepare to respond before the outbreak, you can avoid large epidemics and large pandemics. The first line of defense is a diagnostic test. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. It enables the public health community to identify those who have been exposed, who are infected, and quarantine them so they don't infect anybody else. Hello. We are out here doing COVID testing. So you're willing to have okay. yourself tested? For me, I'm not interested. Hello, good day. As you can see, we've been here in the taxi rank. We are doing some tests. As long as it's not hurting, I don't have a problem. No hurt, no pain, no blood. Are you okay doing the test, Ma? It won't hurt you. It's so important that we work together as a global community to avoid the next pandemic. That's why our lab in South Africa is part of the Abbott Pandemic Defense Coalition. We need to prepare 100 samples that have been requested by the SERI lab. Definitely. We definitely have enough samples available. The Abbott Pandemic Defense Coalition is trying to do things very differently being proactive and having industry lead a network of experts to quickly build the tools that can be put in the hands of public health experts. When samples arrive at our lab, we extract the genetic code of the SARS-CoV-2 virus to identify the mutations. At SERI, we have the largest DNA sequences in the world. But the most important part is not the equipment and the technology, but how a very expert team of different disciplines can work together in real time. So I got the results from our bioinformatic team. It is not a new variant, so I think that we can relax a little bit. <laughs> the ones that we are suspicious, in reality, they were recombinants between Delta and Omicron. What it means is not something that's likely to cause a big wave of infections. And let's hope we don't have another alarm next week. <laughs> so, Violet, how has your experience been with COVID? There was a lot of frustration. The community had a lot of challenges. Yeah. And I couldn't think about myself because I had to help people. And I have small kids, so when I looked at my kids, I said, 
I'm gonna fight. I'm a fighter and I'm gonna be purpose-driven and that's why I do the work that I do in my community.